If you've seen the maps that uh, BPBD DKI Jakarta has put out regarding the flooding, OpenStreetMap is the base of that. The Arway boundaries that show whether or not they're flooded, that was collected in OpenStreetMap. Uh, and part of the reason for that is that the technology is relatively easy to use, and also if information is in there, anyone can use it. Uh, so just a brief summary, so the idea for us uh, is open data and open source software um, for disaster preparedness response and then economic development. Um, and that's what brought me uh, to Indonesia. Uh, now, I'm gonna, now that I've given some background, I'm going to talk more specifically just about the OpenStreetMap data model and what you can do with it. Um, oops, okay with that. Um, so the data model is based on key value pairs. So it's not a traditional database where you say, okay, I have these 10 columns and I'm going to fill out these 10 things for each row of data. So for example, um, here's one of the buildings on campus. Um, so these are the tags regarding it. Um, so the first um, one is just that it's a building. And you can be varied levels of detail about it. In this case, it just says, yes, it's a building. Um, I would probably sh should have gone and then edited it and said it's a building, and then it said, yes, education. Um, so you could also, um, uh, like a health facility, it would be building health care. Um, and one thing you'll notice, it has two names in this case. Um, it could have many, for example. Uh, with naming things in OpenStreetMap, whatever the, the language used in the area is, it's the default name tag. Um, but you can then put names for as many other languages as you want. And what that allows you to do is make maps that are not just in English, for example. Uh, so once you have that information, it's a map though, you need lines and uh, shapes and points for the actual uh, geography. So we use what's known as nodes, ways, and relations. So a node is just a point. So for example, a restaurant, um, a hospital, that sort of thing. A way um, can be one of two things. Um, there's a the idea of an open way, so imagine a road, just a line, and then imagine a closed way, a line that comes back on itself. So if you were drawing the outline of a park, you would want to close it, but a road, you know, it would go intersect with another road. So the, and then finally, relations, which are a bit weird. Relations are information about nodes or ways. <coughs> So an example of that would be if, if you wanted the boundaries of a country, and it, let's, let's say um, it's not one contiguous outline. So for example, with many islands, you would say, okay, this island and this island are part of this relation. They're part of Indonesia, for example. Or if you um, had village boundaries, and they were part of a province, you could say this, these um, boundaries relate to this province. So it's a way of sort of putting an umbrella over the nodes or the uh, ways. So um, what to do with that? Um, there's a bunch of different um, things that developers can do with that. Um, uh, the, the simplest is just to download the data and you can stick it into, typically, people use a PostGIS database, um, and then you could use it for different types of queries. Um, Geofabric is a company that uh, provides downloads of the data um, by country and region. Because um, the thing is, with OpenStreetMap, you can go download the entire world, but then to use that, you need lots of server space and keeping it up to date and things like that. And maybe you only need to use one country or one city. Um, so they do the slicing um, for you. It is um, possible to keep 
your own mirror of the database um, as well. Uh, there's minutely, um, hourly, and daily extracts, which you can just apply. Um, but a lot of people tend to just download it from here, for example. Um, so the other thing is tiles. Um, so tiles um, are similar to, think about how Google Maps works. If you're in one area and you scroll your mouse over to another part of the map, it's loading these little pictures is how it works. So OpenStreetMap, uh, there's lots of different tiles as well that you can use. These are the default ones. Um, if you go to the OpenStreetMap website, there's about five or six different types of tile views. Um, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, we have a specific one more related to disasters. There's one specific to um, cycling. So for example, um, you're not going to go ride your bicycle down the toll road, hopefully. Um, so, those map, so those roads are more in the background. But side streets that you might want to ride your bicycle down are more in the foreground. So you can make different types of maps depending on your interest. Um, there's also um, one for charts, uh, for uh, sea navigation, and a variety of others. Um, you can also get small pieces of the um, data. Uh, so this is the overpass API. Uh, and one thing I should have mentioned, uh, the actual OpenStreetMap Foundation, what we do, is very small. The foundation um, has the license for the data and the main servers. But all, a lot of these things I'm showing you, volunteers, companies, other projects around OpenStreetMap run them. So someone saw a need for having a good API to quickly access the data, and they made that themselves and provided it to the community. Um, so what this allows you to do is query, um, and then get either XML or JSON back. So if you, um, for example, wanted to say, I want all the buildings in this little area, it then can return that to you. And you could then um, use that in a variety of different ways. Uh, one of the common ways would be if you had a map with tiles, but you wanted to highlight a specific place, you would, you would need to get the information back to highlight it on top of the tiles. Uh, another one is nominated. Uh, so this is a geocoder. Um, so you enter a street address, um, the name of a place, and then it returns to you uh, the information about it. And but all of these have APIs behind them. I just felt like it was easier to show that there's also the sample web front end. Um, and one of, but one of the great things about this, I think, is sure, sometimes it doesn't find what you're looking for. But the thing is, um, you can go change that if you do have that information. For example, if you go search for your house or your, your office, like, well, it can't find my office. You can go fix that. Because um, if, for example, you were going to send your office address to a customer or um, there's specific um, facilities you're creating an application around, you can make sure that they're in there. Um, with a lot of other, or, um, if you, if you complain about a lot of commercial maps, it can take months to get it fixed. You can fix this instantly. Um, it also does routing. Um, so this is just a route from um, where I live in Kuningen down here. Uh, so that's also the same thing. If the route looks dumb for some reason, if it's taking you not down the best route, um, it's pot or a road, important road is missing. You can go add that. Um, so as you can see, it provides many of the same APIs that you would expect from regular um, commercial mapping providers. Um, and there's a presentation about this um, Tim Sutton gave back in 2013. Um, I just wanted to give sort of a pitch for uh, InnoSafe, which we work on, which is um, this is specific to Python. Uh, so InnoSafe is this uh, plugin that you see on the right-hand side for uh, QGIS, which is open source geographic information um, software. 
And what it allows you to do is combine data, such as OpenStreetMap, uh, with scientific models to determine what might be the effect of a disaster. Um, and it makes use of um, the overpass API, for example. So what happens is if you want to um, do an analysis of a specific area and you need all the buildings or all the hospitals, it goes to the overpass API and downloads that so you can do your analysis. Um, and then also uses OpenStreetMap as the, the base map for the information. Um, and uh, we actually are rele releasing NSA 2.0 um, within the next week or two. Um, you know how sometimes it can be hard to pin a release to a very specific day, depending on if your te tests are passing, but we're very close. Um, so that's another example of actually using Python and OpenStreetMap together. Um, and as I've been saying, um, if there's data missing that you need, you can always add it. Um, for example, uh, Mapbox is a commercial company, and they provide the map tiles for organizations such as Foursquare, um, the newspaper USA Today, um, Craigslist, all sorts of large um, web presence. Um, and what they got back when they Foursquare switched over, they said the roads really suck in Brazil, for example. But so what they did is they worked with people to help update that information. Um, and with Foursquare in particular, um, I don't know if anyone's a super user, but people are used to going and fixing the places in Foursquare. Um, so the idea of saying, oh, I also want to fix the roads is not that crazy. Um, so, uh, there's multiple companies um, and organizations like mine that work with people to help update the information. Um, and as I said, try submitting that to other mapping providers. It can be very difficult to get it fixed. Um, and um, you can be kind of stuck if it's, a, if it's an important place for you. That, um, and the other thing is you can be as detailed as possible. For example, a lot of universities um, have very detailed campus maps in OpenStreetMap. Uh, the one here is fairly detailed. Some of the uh, footpaths could be better so that you could route. Um, we actually had, uh, so we're doing a university road show in 10 universities um, over the course of the next couple months. We had our first workshop here two days ago. Um, to introduce people to um, OpenStreetMap. And we've given workshops in the Faculty of Geography before. Um, so, um, but then we'll be coming back to do further workshops. So hopefully the campus gets better updated, which is not the point of the workshops. The point of the workshops is to teach students how to do mapping for disaster preparedness. But a side effect is um, updating usually the university. Um, so that was sort of an overview. I was hoping people would mostly have questions because I think um, people have their own applications um, for using uh, map data and maybe you're interested in ways to do that. Um, I can also show how simple it is to log in and make an edit if uh, people are, uh, if, if anyone would like to see that as well. Okay. <laughs> Um, so it's really simple these days. Um, there's a JavaScript editor on just on OpenStreetMap. Uh, Obviously, if you're doing this on your phone, the location would be a lot smaller than that circle since it would be using GPS. Does one, uh, does OpenSuite has a mobile application? Yeah, well, there's lots of mobile applications. I, um, also, this, um, just the, the website has been, um, optimized for mobile as well now. Um, 
But there's a variety of native Android and iPhone app applications as well um, for both editing and using for regular uh, navigation. Depending on stress on the server to be updated. 
so now I'm going to go back. And as I said, it'll take a little bit of time to show up, but within uh, five minutes to an hour, um, providing I refresh my cache as well, it, that will show up. Um, and I just, since I'm on the website, I just wanted to mention, along with the data, there's also a community here. Um, so for example, uh, there's user, user diaries, which are essentially um, blogs. Um, as well as um, profiles and uh, a messaging system. So um, similar to a lot of social networks, you can friend people, um, see when they edit, um, and that sort of that sort of thing. Um, you can also message people who have made edits. Uh, so for example. Um, if you had a question about something, you could send someone a message. So, for example, if I was in the editing area, let's say I had a question about this building, um, I can go view it. And I could then send this person a message. Uh, just if, if I had questions of some sort. Um, the other thing is, um, if you wanted to have a mapping event and you wanted to invite people local to you, you could go see who's editing and invite them. Um, so there's this whole social thing around it. Um, and the website and um, all